What's poppin' y'all? Welcome to the full starter's guide to the Hypixel Pit. The first step to uh, starting the pit is you gotta join the pit. So just left click on the guy and um uh what yeah so basically i will be playing on this account and getting it all the way to prestige one throughout the video i'll be giving tips and tricks that i've learned throughout my 700 hours on pit wait 700 i've damn i've played this too much a lot of these tips that i will be saying can be used no matter what prestige you are so sit back relax grab yourself some soup because it's gonna be a long video at the bottom right of the screen, there will be a timer for how long it takes me to get to Prestige 1. The video will be sped up as uh, watching over 4 hours of footage is just a little boring. When you first jump down into the pit, there's almost nothing you can do other than try to kill as many players as possible. You should level up extremely fast, as 1 or 2 kills will usually give you enough XP to level up. The first objective is to get to 500 gold to purchase the perk Golden Heads. This should almost always be the first perk you purchase, as it is a direct upgrade to Golden Apples. I recommend staying middle when you start, as you will get constant assists and kills. Being around the outside of the map is something you should only do when you are attempting to go on a longer streak, as being in middle is more efficient for everything else. Obsidian boxes are a great way to get tons of assists. You will usually see an obsidian box near middle. Do not attempt to make your own obsidian box, as it is a waste of gold, and without the build battler upgrade, the obsidian box will die faster than an anti-vax kid. Do not buy diamond armor when first starting out, as you will need all of your gold for upgrades. Because you shouldn't buy diamond armor, it is a good idea to try to kill people in diamond armor, as it has a chance to drop on death. Obviously, you shouldn't only target diamond users, but if you see one that is low, you might want to swoop in and yoink that armor. So now that you have golden heads, it will be a lot easier to survive longer as you can heal much faster. The next thing to work towards is either lucky diamond or strength chaining. It all depends on your playstyle, as if you like playing in middle, then strength chaining is a better perk than lucky diamond. Personally, I like to go on streaks that aren't in middle, so I decided to get lucky diamond. You will also see people that have gold numbers surrounding them. This is a player with a bounty, and killing them gives you the amount of gold that surrounds them. Bounty bumps are given randomly to players after they get a 6 kill streak. The bounty bumps could be from 50 gold to 250 gold. The maximum bounty you can get while streaking is 5,000. If you see anyone with a bounty above 5,000, that usually means that they AFK in lobbies until the Everyone Gets a Bounty event happens, which will boost the bounty up 100 gold. Using the enchant self-check, a, a player can remove their bounty without going to spawn. This is usually how players get bounty bumps even after they get their first 5,000 bounty. In this clip, I actually managed to get a kill streak over 30. So it is definitely possible to go on longer streaks, even if you don't have overpowered items. Obviously, the pit depends on how good you are at PvP, so players who are new to PvP may be slower at leveling up than someone who spends 23 hours a day grinding UHC 1v1s. The main thing new players don't understand is how to pick your fights. A lot of the time, new players will blindly throw themselves at high prestige players hoping to win a 1v1. This is not a very smart way to approach the PvP of Pit, as you should only try to 1v1 someone if you have the gear necessary to kill your opponent. When spotting an opponent to fight, the most useful thing to do is to look at their armor. Obviously, a player in diamond armor is going to be harder to kill, but what really matters is if they are wearing leather pants. Try to keep away from players in diamond armor that use leather pants, as usually, they will look in your direction and you will instantly fly into the sky and explode like a firework, because that's 100% what happens whenever you- yeah, that's 100%- trust me on this one, trust me on this one. In addition to seeing what pants they are wearing, another indication of whether or not you should fight someone is by looking at their helmet. If they aren't wearing a helmet, they are usually a low prestige, so you might want to try attacking them. A leather helmet means that they are at least prestige 5, as there is a renown upgrade that grants you a leather helmet. Leather helmets are not the same as leather pants. There's nothing special about a leather helmet other than the added defense. Chain helmets are given by the perk Safety First, which any prestige player can get, so treat them the same as someone without a helmet. A diamond helmet means the player is most likely using decent gear, as a diamond helmet sells for 10 to 15,000 gold and can only be obtained through care packages and through auctions. The last type of helmet is the golden helmet, which has the same armor value as a diamond helmet, but it has 5 lives. 
you get a golden helmet by completing the King's Quest, which is a special quest on a specific map. The quest is only available for players over Prestige 1. Like a diamond helmet, a player wouldn't use a gold helmet without the necessary equipment to go on a long streak. Try to stay clear from players in gold and diamond helmets. I just bought Lucky Diamond, so now I can start to go on some longer streaks. The main reason I prefer Lucky Diamond when starting is due to the cost of diamond armor. 4,000 gold for a reliable way to get diamond armor for free? Sign me up, chief! Other than a good way to get diamond armor, it also gives you access to diamond leggings, which aren't obtainable in the shop. Lucky Diamond will not give you a diamond helmet. Strength Chaining is the other viable perk to buy. It is an amazing perk no matter what prestige you are, and in almost all my perk setups, I like to have it. Every kill will give you plus 8% damage that stacks 5 times. That means if you kill 5 players in quick succession, you will have a 40% damage increase as long as you can kill someone once every 7 seconds. Obviously, this is insanely overpowered and can easily get you high streaks. I decided not to choose it just yet, as I wanted to simulate what a new player might prefer to do. One of the best things to do to level up fast is to partake in events. Events are essential to getting large amounts of golden XP. Currently, I am doing Blockhead, which is a major event. When you are new, you should do every event. All events, even if they seem dumb, give more gold than you would normally get by streaking. Doing events when you first start can be extremely hard, as you don't have the necessary items to get higher up in the leaderboard. I personally recommend participating in all events, because as time goes on, you will pick up strategies that work for each event. For example, in Blockhead, if you stay around the outside of a map and kill people in obscure places, your blocks will most likely last longer. When doing events, you usually need to do specific things to get more rewards. For example, in Blockhead, if you kill at least 8 players, you get bonus rewards. Another example is in the major event Raffle, you need 27 tickets to get the reward of 1 Renown. Renown is a valuable currency for prestige players. You get renown by prestiging and taking part in events. Unfortunately, if you haven't prestige, you don't earn renown from events. Renown is what really makes Pit different from any other Kit PvP server, because with Renown you can get amazing upgrades like Yummy, which gives you to it wait it it get wait that's wait wait that's absolutely shit. The game really opens up once you prestige for the first time, as after prestiging once, you get access to essential upgrades. For example, there's a Renown upgrade that simply gives you another heart, which you can buy twice. Kinda OP, not gonna lie. I actually managed to maintain first on Blockhead in this clip, mostly due to luck, but even so, this shows you that you don't need OP items to do well in some events, you just need, uh, you, you, you just need 700 hours played, oh Jesus. One thing to remember is that there are three quests you can do in the pit. Two are daily and one is weekly. I forgot to accept them at the beginning of this video, but uh, better late than never. When you are dropping down middle, you might want to look for another lobby that doesn't have people in god set streaking, as you won't get any kills or assists if you just die instantly. It's a much better use of time if you streak in a lobby without any god set users. Due to the fact I'm using Lucky Diamond, I choose to only buy Diamond Swords. Currently, our main goal is to get to level 70 so that we can buy and equip a new perk. The perk I choose to go for is Strength Chaining. After you get enough Renown, you can unlock Mysticism. Mysticism is the most important part of Pit. With Mystic items, you can become a literal god. There are three types of mystics, mystic bows, mystic swords, and mystic pants. Mystic items, when enchanted at the mystic well, get custom enchants unique to the pit. You can enchant mystic items three times. Each time increases the tier of the item. To tier three a mystic item, you need to sacrifice a specific color mystic pant. For swords and bows, the color is random. For pants, it will always be the same color as the pant you are enchanting. Mystic items can have a max of three enchants on them. There are also rare enchants that are extremely unique and are often quite Quite overpowered. I put a full list of all the enchants in the description of the video. All mystic items also have a certain amount of lives. After all lives are depleted, the item is permanently destroyed. Luckily, there's an item called a Mystic Repair Kit. Mystic Repair Kits are only obtainable through the minor event Auction, where a random item is put up for auction. Usually, you only see Mystic Repair Kits in auctions about once a week, making them extremely rare and valuable. Another extremely important item for Mystic users are Funky Feathers. Funky Feathers save a life on all your Mystics if you die. The feather is simply destroyed on death while keeping your inventory safe and sound. Feathers are only obtainable through auctions, and just like Mystic Repair Kits, feathers are extremely rare and valuable. 
You get mystic drops randomly by killing people after you purchase the first tier of mysticism. You can increase the drop chance by upgrading the renown perk. Fresh mystic items are mystics that haven't been enchanted yet. Since fresh don't drop on death, feel free to hoard all the fresh you want in your inventory. Fresh mystic bows are bows that look enchanted. They are worth roughly 2-3 to thousand gold, the least valuable out of all of the fresh mystics. Fresh swords are gold swords that either look enchanted or look ordinary. They are worth roughly 4-6 to thousand gold. Fresh mystic pants are leather pants. There are 8 different color pants. Red, green, blue, orange, and yellow pants are all normal mystic pants that drop with the renown upgrade. There are also 3 special pant colors, which require different ways to obtain them. The 3 special pant colors are aqua, dark, and sewer pants. Normal mystic pants and sewer pants are worth 8 to 10,000 gold, aquas are worth 2 to 4,000 gold, and dark pants are worth 3 to 6,000 gold. One minor event that most people don't partake in is the Care Package event. This event is useless when the server is full, as the chances of even reaching the Care Package is extremely low. In a smaller server, it can be quite easy to snatch some items. I actually managed to get a Diamond Helmet, which I later sell for 9,000 gold, giving me a nice boost in the gold department. I just passed level 70, which is the required level needed to equip a third perk, so I purchased Strength Chaining. After a little bit of grinding, I sell the D-Helm that I yoinked and use the gold to buy the most important streaking perk, Streaker, obviously. With the perk Streaker, going on long streaks actually means something. Now that I don't need to save gold, I replace Lucky Diamond with Streaker. I also complete the Double Up quest that I started earlier. This gives me a nice 10k gold boost. Now that I have extra gold, I purchase the XP boost upgrade. Getting this upgrade isn't essential, but it helps a little. I really only recommend people get these upgrades if you have lots of extra gold to spend. It's much better to use your gold on diamond armor than a 1% damage increase. But I didn't really know what to do with my extra gold, so I just bought it for fun. After equipping strength chaining, it becomes a ton easier to streak in middle. During this clip, I managed to get over 20 kills in under a minute. Strength 5 really does wonders against people in iron armor. When streaking in an obby box, it is important to maintain a way to heal. I was struggling quite a bit with healing in this clip, as golden heads don't grant any instant health, only absorption. It all depends on the healing perk you have. Personally, I love the renown upgrade soup, 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 as it is always a good perk and is worth buying. Contracts are an essential part of gold grinding. I often forget how useful contracts can be, especially with the pant enchant negotiator. When choosing a contract, I often look for simple ones. For example, I decided for example, I decided to choose to kill people with a diamond sword as I knew I would be doing that anyway. There are a few contracts that you should almost never choose. For example, unless you want carpal tunnel, don't choose the land x amount of arrow shots contract. That contract often results in either running out of time or being in pain from spamming too much. Some contracts cannot be completed on certain maps, such as the void kill contract where you have to throw players into the void. On some some maps there is no area to do this or it just takes too much effort to do. Even if there are higher rewarding contracts, you should only choose contracts based on how fast you can do them, as you only have 5 minutes. I suggest you only do the higher tier contracts, as the low cost contracts don't reward enough gold for them to be viable. You can only do the higher tier contracts after level 70, so make sure to grind to level 70 before doing your daily contracts. You can increase the amount of daily contracts with the Renown upgrade. I only suggest you buy this Renown upgrade if you have unlocked most of the essential Renown perks and upgrades. Now we're on to the final stretch. After doing contracts, unlocking perks, and buying upgrades, it's finally time to put it all to use. From this point on, almost every life I buy diamond armor and attempt to go on a long-ish streak. It just takes some practice, but eventually you'll be able to go on longer streaks. It only gets easier after Prestige 1. Well, it becomes easier to survive, which in turn makes it easier. Unfortunately, after around level 100, it takes a lot of time to level up. I hit a motivation wall around this point as it was taking longer and longer to level up. The main thing to remember is that the game becomes a lot more fun after you've gone through the cycle once and you know what to do. On my main account, it took me forever to Prestige, but I'm glad I stuck with the game and kept going. From this point on, there's no real trick to get through these levels. Going from level 100 to 120 almost took more time than getting from level 0 to 100 for me. When streaking, it's always better to streak in a group. If you have people to streak with, it can make the game a whole lot easier. I chose not to truce with anyone during this, as I wanted to make sure that I didn't have any unfair advantages. If you are in a larger group while streaking, you can run to your teammates if you're getting hunted. This is how I usually go on longer streaks. 
I actually managed to pull something off during this beast event. During beast event, the beast gets 250 gold every 5 seconds. This means if you escape from middle and go to a secluded spot, you can just sit there and rake in FAT STACKS OF GOLD. When you are beast, it's really smart to try and get people to team with you, as it is impossible to regain your health when you are beast. I personally don't hunt anybody, as I choose not to, but most players will try to hunt bountied players. If you do choose to hunt, I suggest you only target bounties above 1000 gold, otherwise the cost of diamond armor might exceed the bounty you are trying to claim. As with streaking, hunting is always better with a team. When you prestige, there are two different factors to whether or not you can prestige. The first thing is XP, obviously, but the other thing is the gold requirement. The gold requirement depends on what prestige you are. During the first 10 prestiges, you probably don't need to worry about this, but the higher you go, the more of an issue it becomes. Currently, I'm prestige 23, and to get to prestige 24, I need to have grinded 1.4 million gold. This doesn't mean that I need to have 1.4 million before I prestige, it just means that I need to have earned 1.4 million gold. Something similar to obsidian boxes are obsidian rings. Obsidian rings serve the same purpose as an obby box, but they encompass the innermost part of middle. The reason players make obsidian rings is to compact all players into a smaller combat area. The smaller the combat area, the faster you can kill people, as they have nowhere to run. During this clip, I demonstrate how you can chain strength to stay alive, even in an obby ring. It's important when streaking at middle not to anger any higher prestige players. If you anger higher prestige players, they might not let you streak in middle and might kill you repeatedly. Treat higher prestige players the same as your elders, with RESPECT. Obviously, it's up to you on how you interact with other players, but remember that higher prestige players usually play more than other people, so you might encounter them many more times in the future. Making enemies in the pit can be fun, but if you make too many enemies, the game will be almost unplayable, as if you try to streak, people will instantly start hunting you. It's a lot easier to make an enemy than to truce with people, but putting the effort into making as many truces as possible pays off in the long run. Earlier, I was talking about three special types of pants, aqua, dark, and sewer pants. Aqua pants are obtained by fishing with the renown upgrade. When you enchant them, they will have enchants that benefit fishers. All aqua pants have the club rod enchant that grants a fishing rod. You can only have two enchants on aqua pants. Dark pants are obtained through the renown upgrade Heresy. You need at least Heresy 1 to use dark pants. Dark pants were implemented to counter normal mystics. All dark pants will have the enchant Somber, which negates mystic effects on you. All dark pants can only be enchanted twice. You will always get somber on the first tier, and the second tier will be random. Sewer pants are only obtainable on a special map called the King's Map. The only useful thing you can get from sewer pants are trash pandas, which are like a portable e-chest, and hidden jewels, which are an amazing way to get OP mystics. You can only enchant sewer pants once, and they can only have one enchant on them. Cake event, the event I'm doing right now, is my favorite minor event. The only real strategy to cake event is to go for as many cherries as you can. Cherries are the red clay blocks that are in the giant cake. They give lots of gold if you can gather lots of them. Chocolate chips are the brown clay blocks. They grant XP, but honestly, XP is kind of overrated. After cake event, you will most likely have lots of absorption hearts. You can use these absorption hearts to hunt people. In addition to absorption hearts, you will also have speed too, which is just nice to have. We have finally arrived at level 119! This last level is more of a celebration than anything else. If you've gotten this far, CONGRATULATIONS! If you're still, like, level 2, that's okay! Remember that everyone levels up at their own pace? I think that no matter how bad you may think you are, you can still at least get to Prestige 1. Unfortunately, the pit is quite a toxic place, so it can be hard to enjoy the game. Some players even turn off their chat so they can't get aggravated by chat. I think you should keep it on, but just be careful who you talk and trade with, as there are tons of scammers and cheaters in the pit. If you want to check people's inventories and their ender chest, you can use a third-party site. There are two main websites to see people's inventories. The first site is pitpanda.rocks, and it is my preferred site. Pit.blue is the other site that achieves this. I personally like Pit Panda more as they, uh, they, they gave me a custom thingy on my page, which I'm very grateful for.
But in all seriousness, Pit Panda is the better site because it gets constant updates, while Pit Blue is, uh, it's Pit Blue and gets, like, no updates. Just like the Pit! Whoa! No, but actually the Pit never gets updates. If you were wondering why this account is named Pebble3, then let me quickly explain. Pebble3 is the best enchant on Pit. 100%. Don't even question it. Not only does it give you gold, but also absorption. It's it's just ins it's just insane. After this video, this account will be storage for my vast wealth of Pebble Three pants. If you pit panda this account after this video goes up, you can just see how much I love Pebble Three. We are nearing the end here, so if you guys have any more questions, I highly recommend you join, uh, my DISCORD! Hey, My Discord is the best Discord. S sorta. Sorta. Not, well... Maybe. The server is sort of pit-related, so if you need to find any friends who play pit, then this server is for you. If you just want to chill or maybe ask me some questions, I, uh, spend a lot of time in that Discord, so pop in and say hi. I don't usually ask for this, but uh, if you could like the video and maybe subscribe, it would help a lot. Because this video is uh, it's taken, taken a little bit of time to edit. And uh, there we go. It took roughly five and a half hours to get all the way from level zero to level 120. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll, uh, I hope to see you guys in the pit. Peace. God, are you gay? God, are you gay? Are you gay? Are you gay? Hey, it's your boy, uh, Skinny Penis. <laughs>